No looking William Tell. Oh. My wife did archery growing up. I did not. But being good at stuff is so 20th century. Put this on and you don't have to aim anymore. So I guess I made an aimbot. When you wield the aimbot, you almost have a superpower. It tracks targets really well. Almost as well as my dog can track treats. It moves the bow to correct for your lousy aim. And when everything is perfectly lined up, Going into this, I wanted to shoot bullseyes. Lame. Multiple bullseyes? Still lame. Which led to bullseyes flying through the air. So we're gonna try all that and maybe hit the world's smallest William Tell. Sweet. <laughs> this project started when I realized there's a hole in my heart that money just couldn't fill. It's 2021 and I can't buy a self-aiming bow. So I built it. It works now, but it took me thousands of misses to get here. There was also some collateral damage, although my nose probably took the biggest beating. So let me show you why an aimbot is hard. Hey, what are we gonna do? Archery. All right, a lot of stuff just happened. Most importantly, the arrow flew in a curved path. She was aiming above the target, so when the arrow curved down, it would hit the right spot. The arrow curves more or less depending on how fast it's going. If her hands are off by even a couple of millimeters, she will miss. Three, two, one. Oh. This is really hard. You can't aim for where the target is because it won't be there when the arrow reaches it. You have to shoot where the target will be, which is called leading. But what's really hard is the timing. This arrow was fired 50 milliseconds too late. That's one third of the time that a blink takes. Let me show you 50 milliseconds. Did you even see that? Let me do it again. She has to fire within that window of time if she wants to hit the target. It's crazy. And I want to hit moving targets too, so my aimbot is going to have to do this. This is going to be hard. Nice job. Thank you. I mean, two out of three. All right, that's enough. My plan is to make a little robot that goes between my hand and the bow. It will move the bow so that everything is lined up just right, and there will be an even tinier robot in my other hand, which can release the string to fire the bow. The core idea behind this is pretty straightforward, but actually designing and making this is going to be a challenge. I spent over a week on the spontaneous combustion issue. We're not even gonna talk about it. Other than to say, it's fixed. You slide it on like this. It can aim the bow up and down with this linear axis and left and right with this one. Here's the little robot that releases the string. It does this with a little servo motor. It is super important that the bow always points at my back hand. If it doesn't, then the arrows just don't fly right at all. The aimbot hardware is done, but at this point it's pretty much just a crappy heavy bow. I need some kind of sensor that tells me where the bow is relative to the target and a lot of other stuff. There's eight cameras throughout my shop that see everything. They're made by a company called OptiTrack. Here's how it works. If I hold up this little reflective ball, it's seen by all the cameras at the same time. Imagine this is the ball that I'm holding up and a camera's looking at it from this angle. The camera will take a picture that looks like this. If you project an imaginary tube out from the ball in the image, we know that the ball must be in that tube. We just don't know how far away it is from the image. If we add another camera looking at the ball from this angle, we get another tube that the ball could be in, and the intersection of these tubes gives us the location of the ball. And these cameras do this super fast. And the time that it takes to blink, they'll give me 50 updates on the location of this ball. It's bananas. You call these balls markers if you want it to sound like you know what you're talking about. I have tracking balls on the front of the bow, the little grip robot, and on the target. This lets it know where the bow is pointing, how far it's drawn back, and where the target is. I wrote a really simple program to track everything and shoot at stationary targets. And it's time to see what this thing can do.
I'm putting all that force into the string and then it releases without any warning and I punch myself. I'm trying really hard not to punch myself, but I punch myself. Oh yeah, and it's also totally missing. I really should probably move these out of the way. I wanted to communicate my struggle with this problem, so I made a movie trailer? I don't even know anymore. Some say he's still in there. Please tell me that was a fluke. Do you ever plan to let me go? Why won't you just work? That was my week. I was stuck in integration hell where all the pieces work by themselves, but you put them together and they try to kill each other, just like children. The biggest problem is that it just won't shoot the right spot. It is shooting up and the left almost every time. I could shift things over in software, but if I do that, I'm gonna just hide a bug that's going to bite me later. But I won't tell if you don't. All right, let's put this thing to the test. Hey, wife. Auto bow versus wife, three shots each, best shot gets the point. Come on. Here we go. I need my binoculars. Oh, I'm closer. Depends on how you measure it. Darn, I thought I was closer. I was hoping for like a tie or something. But wait. If I hit this, I win everything. Do you go around looking for the biggest apple you could possibly find? No. Mm-hmm. There's obviously some room for improvement here. Maybe it'd be pretty cool for you to fire it. Yeah, maybe. Is it gonna make me miss? No, it's not gonna hurt your aiming. Grip error. Check hand. Ow. Quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. We got a bit sidetracked there. Let's get back to making this work. The bow is just not shooting the right point. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the software, but I'm not gonna debug this and try to figure it out. I still need to make the bow track moving targets and all of that, so I'm gonna just nuke all of this code and hopefully replace all of these old problems with new and exciting problems. One week later, and I have nothing to show you because software development is very boring, but it's ready to test, and I have a super awesome voice-activated target launcher. All right, pull. <clears throat> In the next 500 milliseconds, a lot is going to happen. The bow is drawn and ready to fire. I'm pressing this button, which tells the computer to fire at will. The tracking system sends the computer an update on where everything is every three milliseconds. When the computer sees a target, it checks to see if it's moving in a parabolic motion. And then it does a tedious little calculation to figure out where it should move the bow to intercept the target, taking into account the time to move there, release the arrow, reach the target, and the curved path of the arrow. This takes about a thousandth of a second, and then it starts moving the bow. And then it repeats this over and over again as more tracking data comes in, which allows it to adapt for things like the shaking of my hands. When it thinks it's aiming at just the right point, it waits until the timing is just right, and then completely misses. So the wife catapult was getting pretty tired of waiting an hour for me to fix a bug that I said would only take a minute. So I built this automatic catapult that's gonna let me test as long as I want, and I'm the only one that's gonna suffer. As expected, the new code base is chock full of exciting problems. For example, why is it firing too early? Why is it firing too late? Why won't it hit the target when it's sitting still? Why did it one hit KO my microcontroller? So many bugs. But it's only a matter of time. We're knocking those bugs out. We fix the microcontroller. We destroy targets sitting still. Now we're getting really close. At this point, I'm pretty sure the software and the robot are doing the right thing. But the arrows aren't going where they're supposed to go. But I think I know why. I've been using a recurve bow, which comes out of the box with a fundamental issue. You have to fire the arrow around the bow. This makes the arrow do crazy things. And even crazier things if you're using the cheapest bow that money can buy. Theoretically, I could calculate what's gonna happen and correct for this, but we're just gonna buy our way out of this problem. This is a compound bow. It's very powerful. Ugh, oh, why did I do that? And it shoots arrows really straight. 
It's pretty much a drop in replacement for the other bow, except for one problem. This thing is really heavy. So we're gonna do something about that. If this isn't an aimbot, I don't know what is. This thing supports all of the weight of the bow, so that all I have to do is hold it in place. This thing shoots so much better than the recurve. This kind of feels like cheating, but we're way past that point. I think it's time for another round of bow versus wife. Hey, wife. Whoa, what are you wearing? It's engineering. What does it look like? Body armor with a snake. You ever seen an engineer before? Same thing as before, whoever's closest gets the point. I brought the speed down and have it running in sharpshooter mode. That's three points for the aimbot. I didn't actually do anything, but it feels like I won. All right, it works. Let's do stuff. We're gonna try William Tell again. I have a little apple. Hopefully this is acceptable size to you. That's not an apple. It's an apple. And we're gonna shoot the heck out of it. All right, don't move. No looking William Tell. Oh. Boom. Let's do that again. Again. I need more. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's time to show what this thing can really do. Moving targets. That is so awesome. Oh my goodness. I just love seeing it compute where the target's gonna go and then intercepting it. It's so cool. There is one more thing I really wanna see. He has no idea what's coming. Maybe he does. There's nothing to worry about. We're just gonna shoot this tiny apple off his head. To hit William Tell Nano, we have to be able to hit not only bullseyes, we have to hit the exact same spot on the bullseye every time. This is the best that I can do with the bow, so we're not gonna be able to do it every time, but we should be able to do it sometimes. Look how close we're getting to splitting another arrow. It wants to real bad. All right, he's got his safety goggles on. Terrible shot. This is just embarrassing. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Looks like you got him right in the heart. Kill shot? 100%. Oh yeah, you dead. Everything important. We removed the apple, but it wasn't quite the surgical removal that I hoped for. Let's try it again. It did remove his arms and legs again, but I think this is about as surgical as we're gonna get. This bow is really cool, but it could be a lot better. In fact, I'm already working on a V2, which I'll talk about in just a second. Before I get to that, I wanna talk about this video sponsor. It's for an opportunity that could literally change your life. And I know that sounds really hyperbolic, but I did the thing I'm about to tell you about nine years ago, and it completely altered the trajectory of my life. So check it out, and you just might change your life. This is a very unusual sponsorship. It's actually for an opportunity and it's with Formlabs, which is why there's so much orange around me. All those really nice parts that you see on my projects, those are made on these machines. They're 3D printers, they're some of the best in the world. I've used one on literally every project that I've done. 
I actually worked here for eight years developing these and other machines. I'm up here right now for the annual hackathon where employees build basically whatever they want, including some really cool things. But this isn't about the machines, it's about an opportunity. The things that Formlabs engineers are so good, it has led to a lot of success. When I started, there was 10 people. Now there's over 600. This is where the opportunity comes in. It takes all of the engineering disciplines to make these things, and Formlabs is hiring for everything. If you like my projects, the engineering that happens here will melt your brain. So just go check out formlabs.com jobs. The eight years I spent here were fantastic. It was really one of the best decisions that I've made. I learned so much, I had a big impact on the world, and I worked with amazing people. There's also some pretty nice perks. The only reason I left is I thought the YouTube thing was a one in a million opportunity that I would just regret forever if I didn't try it. There is one job I wanted to highlight, which is CTO. This would be running all of the engineering programs. This is a super rare, super huge opportunity. If you or someone that you know would be a good fit for this, you can always apply online, but I'll also put a link in the description so that you can reach out directly. So that's basically it. You should work at Formlabs. You can check out all the jobs at formlabs.com jobs, and maybe I'll see you around. This bow is cool, but I want more. I want to be competitive with real archers. I actually took this bow to a local range, but that's a story for another day. What you need to know is that William Tell Nano is the key to everything. Huh? When you push the target really far away, small errors become big errors. If I want to hit bullseyes at 60 feet or 150 feet, I need to be able to hit this apple every single time at this distance. Plus, it's awesome. I think I need to make a version two, and I kind of have a design in my head what it would look like. I'm probably gonna do that. Get ready, Legos. Get ready, Legos. Watch out. If that or any of the other crazy things I build sound cool, please consider subscribing. It helps me out, and you'll get notified when I post new videos. If you'd like to support these projects directly, check out my Patreon. That's pretty cool. Thanks for watching.